Good morning, Green Acres. Praise to the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we just pray that you would just open this service, Lord, that you would just lead, guide, direct in everything that you would have done. Help us to honor and worship you in, in just your beauty and your truth, in your word. Lord, it's a light. You are a light unto our paths. And Lord, we just praise your holy name. Lord, we know that if there is a creation, that there's a creator. And Lord, you're in control of all things. And Lord, we just pray that as other churches in the Warner Robins area are worshiping, Lord, that you just be with each and every church. Lord, help us to worship you. And Lord, we just pray for Pastor Tim as he brings a message this morning, for Pastor Micah as he leads. As we sing your praises and honor and worship you, let us do it in spirit and in truth. We just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Green Acres, let's come together. Rise up as we worship and let's sing glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down away from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of God. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of God. Glory to His name. I am so wondrous to say. Jesus so sweetly abides within, there at the cross where he took me in, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood of God, glory to I am so glad that I entered in, there Jesus saves me and keeps me clean, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood of God, glory Fountain so rich and sweet, cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to my heart. Glory to his name. Amen. Y'all, let's pray together. Father, I do thank you again for this day. Lord, for the joy of being able to worship you, to know you in a personal way. Lord, to be able to express what the Holy Spirit has inspired in us through worship. We ask, God, that you would truly overwhelm us again this day with your spirit 
as we seek to honor you, to glorify you, to exalt the name of Jesus in this place. We thank you again for this privilege. God, we consider it a high, high honor. And we ask, Lord, that you would keep us ever mindful of what you have done in us. Lord, that as we seek to worship, that the, that the overflow of thanksgiving and praise would just pour out. We love you, we praise you, and we ask it, God, in the magnificent name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> well, good morning, Green Acres. It is so, so good uh, to see each of you out. We, uh, we hope that each of you have felt uh, welcome. I hope that you have felt the presence of the Lord in this place today. If you are a guest with us today, we consider it a genuine privilege of ours to have you here, an honor of ours, a hope that you have already felt welcome in this place. Um, we ask you to do a favor for us as we seek to minister to you and to be a blessing to you. We ask that you do something for us. In each one of the bulletins, there is a, a card uh, along a perforated edge. If you would tear that, tear that card off and fill that information out for us, you can do one of two things with that at the end of the worship service. You can either lay it in the offering plate as you, pass, as you walk out, or you can hand it to one of our ushers at the end of the service in exchange for a gift. Uh, it's a DVD or a CD of a recent worship service we've had here at Green Acres. Uh, hope that you will take that, that you'll use it, that you'll be blessed by it. We know you'll be blessed by it. The gospel will be presented very clearly in it. And we hope that you will take that and then pass it on to one of your neighbors, maybe a family member or something like that, uh, for, for them to hear. Maybe a neighbor you've been trying to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ for years. Green Acres, if I told you lately that I love you, you are very, very dear to me. You are very dear to our pastoral staff. Um, just when all of this stuff started with uh, the pandemic, the COVID-19 um, um, pandemic, we, things happened very, very quickly. Changes were happening, ver happening very quickly. I don't know if you remember, but that, um, that Friday afternoon, just before everything went to shut down, we were told by our local authorities, they had a big meeting. In fact, Pastor Tim was there. Uh, sat in on that meeting, and, and everything went smooth, and they said, hey, it's going to be okay, everything's all right, we may have to take some few precautions or things like that. Come Monday morning, it was shut down the doors, uh, no one needs to go anywhere, we need to stay where we are in quarantine, and all of those kind of things, and then they did a shelter in place, and I mean, it really got, it, it turned very quickly. We are facing those same kind of things again. We are not going to stop unless we need, unless we have to, we're not going to stop meeting on Sunday mornings. Uh, many of y'all received an email and a letter this last week uh, letting you know that we were going to resume evening worship services uh, Sunday evening and Wednesday evening. Uh, I don't know if you are aware, but between 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon and 3 o'clock on Saturday, there were over all, just shy of 4,400 new cases of, of COVID-19 in our state. Um, our heart... Our longing is to be together. That is our desire. That's what we want to do. We also have to do what's wise and what's best. And though we had rescheduled uh, those, in fact, even in the weekly schedule in the bulletin, you'll notice that it says we're going to be meeting uh, Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. Um, we made the decision just this morning. Uh, the pastors were very unified in the decision uh, to uh, postpone that decision until a date where we feel that it's, it's uh, wiser and safer. We'll continue to meet Sunday mornings, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, have the two worship services. Um, but we will not be meeting tonight here. We'll have it on YouTube. Pastor Tim is going to record this afternoon. As soon as he leaves here, he'll go get a bite to eat, and then he's going to go record this evening worship service, uh, the Bible study, and that'll be online, should be, prayerfully, will be online this evening uh, in time at the 6 o'clock hour. Uh, but if not, catch up with that. It'll be online soon enough. So um, be looking for that and on Wednesdays. Until the time that we're able to get back together um, on a consistent basis, the more times we meet, and it, it's just statistics, it's just obvious math, the more times we meet, the more likely we're going be, to be spreading. And, uh, and so we take all the precautions. Um, thank you for reading the email. I know that you read the email as well that went out uh, that discussed 
um, the excitement of last week. And wasn't it exciting? Wasn't it exciting? Well over 200 people uh, between the two worship services and, uh, and then a new pastor. I mean, how more exciting could that get? And I'll tell you, we all let our guards down, or many of us, many of us let our guards down um, and should not have and, uh, and hope that we will all become far more sensitive to what, um, what, is, what is necessary for, uh, for everyone that's around us, everyone that's around us. Um, you may not get sick, but others may, and that's, it's important that we take those precautions. Um, that being said, uh, and you'll hear more about that through the, through the rest of the service, um, just, just know your pastors are very, very one-minded on this. And, uh, but want to get into a time where we talk about the prayer requests um, each week. Again, like I say, we're going re- to um, speak those during this pandemic while there's still some separation, while there's still no small groups and things like that. We want to be able to let people know how to pray uh, for each other. And so um, one in particular that came in Thursday afternoon, and uh, we did not get an email out about that. So I want to announce that to you uh, very specifically. Be praying for Pastor Ed's wife and her family, uh, Betty Strawmeyer, her aunt, um, this last week, um, very tragically and very instantly uh, died in a head-on collision. Um, someone crossed over the center lane, and there was nothing that could be done. And um, her, her name was Rachel. Uh, her husband, I'm sorry? Okay, and her husband, uh, Billy. So be praying for, for Billy uh, as he mourns the passing of his wife um, and for that whole family. Uh, be praying for them, uh, specifically picking up, uh, lifting up Betty uh, and, and, of course, uh, Linda. Don't forget to be praying for our new pastor, Sean, uh, Dr. Sean Watson and Laura. Uh, they're two boys. They are uh, very soon going to be moving to Georgia, very, very soon. Um, uh, in fact, they'll be here a good many weeks before, a few weeks before they actually start here. Um, she has to come, as while he's finishing up in, in Missouri, she has to come here because she's a teacher in, the, in our local uh, public school system, and, and so she has to be here very soon. So uh, in all of this transition time, be praying for them. Uh, be available to help in whatever, whatever way you can as they're moving in and those kind of things. But be lifting them up as, uh, as he goes to that time and separating from his old church. And be praying, if you would, for Webb City Bapt- uh, First Baptist. Uh, pray for them uh, as they go through the same kind of process that we just went through. Uh, lift them up uh, before the Lord as they, go, as they walk through that. Yo. Thank you. Yeah, need a very short term uh, month, maybe, maybe as much as um, two months, but um, certainly no later than my understanding is August the 30th when they'll be able to move into their new home. Um, so be praying for them and, and that they'll be able to secure a place to, uh, to rent. If you know someone or, uh, or you have a place that can be rented, um, let, let, um, let one of the staff members know, um, or you could call Beth. She uh, has been in very close contact with them, so... Also be remembering Justin Kicklighter. Of course, he contracted uh, the COVID-19 virus uh, and is dealing with that. He's recovering and uh, recovering well, but y'all be praying for them and the family as they're, of course, having to be completely quarantined through this time, so be praying for them. Uh, Don't forget the Tuckers, uh, Ryan and Kaylee, um, their new baby Evelyn. Uh, Be praying for them. You know, it was brought to my attention during the break in between the 9 and 11 o'clock service, and they're not here this morning uh, but they have been here each morning. Uh, we had a new baby that was born during the pandemic. Um, we had a pandemic baby. Um, uh, little Harrison um, Wood is, uh, was with us the last two, the first two Sundays that we had regathered, three Sundays that we had regathered. And uh, it, was a, it was a joy to see Caroline and Daniel Wood with their new baby. Uh, make sure that you next time, they're, they're on vacation this week. So as you see them next week, uh, make sure that you, uh, that you speak with them and, and, uh, and celebrate with them that new, that new baby. Um, Melanie Hyde, of course, is expecting. She and Josh uh, looking forward to, uh, to that new baby uh, that's coming. They're about three and a half months in. It's a very exciting time. Um, also, please be remembering um, Francis Jordan. 
uh, as she is still continuing to have some breathing, some breathing issues. It's making her very weak. She had a couple of tests um, this past Monday and, uh, and expecting the results from those tests uh, soon, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Amen? I mean, that, we all know what it means to wait on test results, so uh, be praying for her. I'd also like to ask you to lift, um, lift a lady named Nancy Payne. Uh, she's a very dear friend of Green Acres, though she's not uh, a member here. Um, she and her husband, David, both have major health concerns, but Nancy is dealing with cancer right now and, uh, and all the treatments for that. She goes on a lot of our trips. Uh, she and uh, David go on a lot of trips with the Pearls uh, whenever we go on trips all over, the, all over the United States. So be praying for them, lifting them up. They've asked us to pray for them, and we need to be careful to do that. So um, be remembering them. Also, uh, Erlene, uh, she's, she uh, texted me actually yesterday, very excited about uh, a date uh, that, that it, the uh, surgery has been scheduled for her pacemaker to be put back in, and prayerfully, very soon after that, she'll be able to be back here with us. Uh, y'all be praying for her as she, as she continues to stay at home, sheltered in place as much as possible. Uh, of course, be lifting Dale. Uh, as he recovers from his surgery and is facing the, uh, the radiation treatments that are coming up very soon. Next week they start? Yes, that's right. And uh, Dale's with us, of course, here this morning. Be praising God for Dale and his life. Uh, Rex is still uh, recovering from his rotator cuff surgery. Be re remembering Rex Bond. Um, I'm looking through just a couple of others. There are so many names on this list, y'all. There are, there are well over 40 names. There's no way I could list them all. Uh, but be praying for each of, each of these people. Uh, also be mindful that the men, every Tuesday morning at 6.30, we gather online uh, in a Zoom meeting and we pray together uh, for all of these. One last thing I want to mention before, before uh, we get back to uh, the music. Um, be praying for your deacons. We have, of course, the deacon nominations. Uh, there are men that are being considered all over the congregation. Um, we would like to get as many as seven, if possible, seven men to, uh, to join the, the deacon body uh, to serve. And uh, that would give us a number we'd be able to function, function uh, very, very smooth. So uh, if you've been asked and you're able, you're willing, uh, be, pray, be in much prayer about that, men, and, uh, and um, see if we can... See if we can um, serve our widows uh, very well in this place and serve the rest of the, the fellowship as well. Well, no further ado, why don't we stand together and let's worship as we sing, Man of Sorrows. Let's lift our voices as we worship together, y'all. Yes. 
gospel. Y'all continue to worship as we lift his name and sing, call it grace. Love that took our place to 
Just call it what it is. Call it grace. Call it grace. It's the breath that's breathing new life into what we thought was dead. It's the favor that takes orphans, placing crowns upon the hope for our tomorrows, the rock on which we stand, is a strong and mighty fortress, even hell can't stand against, some may call it foolish and impossible, but for every heart a miracle is nothing less than scandalous this love that took our place just call it what it is call it grace call it grace call it grace Father, we know that in the world's eyes, the reality of the cross, the reality of a risen Savior, the reality of an ascended Christ sounds like insanity. That one man would die and the blood that he shed would be the Redemption for all mankind of all time. It sounds impossible. We thank you, God, for that miracle, though. We understand, we know what you have done through the cross. And Father, this day we seek to turn our hearts and our minds toward that very fact. Lord, as we seek to honor you this day, and as we dig into your word in just a few moments, Father, we pray that you would use that word, Lord, to touch our hearts, to transform our minds, Lord, to make us the living sacrifices that you have called us to be. Holy Spirit, reign in our hearts as we seek to know you better through your word. And I pray, Father, that you would use your servant, Lord, in a mighty way. Overwhelm Pastor Tim as he preaches this morning. Holy Spirit, flow through him. Word of God, speak. And we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. 
It's good to be with you. It's good to see you. I know you had some uh, exciting things take place here last Sunday. I prayed for all of you, not just on Sunday, but the entire week leading up to that. And I'm delighted that you have a new pastor who's coming. I'm excited for you, and I'm excited for him. I teased the first uh, group this morning that uh, I said I've watched our viewership on YouTube where I'm concerned wane a little bit, so I know you're tired of me. I get that. You've been incredibly gracious, so thank you for, for the privilege of serving you. I've also received a very uh, sweet gift <laughs> at our home this week. Uh, I didn't know anything about that, but you have been very gracious to me and my family. Thank you from the bottom of our heart. I've enjoyed serving you, and I'm excited about Sean's coming and all the things that God has ahead for you. Uh, the way this is working out, I think, we're right now on... Uh, what has always been Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, um, we've been in the book of Hebrews. If you haven't caught any of those studies, I hope you'll go listen to them. They uh, are really informative. Hebrews gives us some real insight into the Old Testament and how Christ's death and burial and resurrection and all that He has done in establishing the New Covenant, the New Testament, fulfills the Old Covenant and does away with it. it. It completes it and does away with it. So we come by grace. That's what we've been singing about. And then I hope we're going to get a chance here in the next couple of weeks that I'm with you prior to Sean's coming to finish this book of Philippians. I hope that you're seeing some things in this that we need to see. Let's continue that thought process this morning as we look at Philippians chapter 2 beginning in verse 12. Philippians 2.12 says this to us through the Holy Spirit and the Apostle Paul. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for His good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world." holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I may also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Last time we were together, we looked at the suffering and the condescension of Christ. Christ lowering himself and giving up the rights that he had as God the Son in heaven to come to earth and die, not just some death, not just to live a trial of a life like many folks on earth go through, but to die a horrible death, a criminal's death, the death of the cross, the death due each one of us because of our having transgressed, broken the law of God. And as we looked last time at the ultimate example of humility, Paul's pen finds its way to what we would call in this section, application. Brother Tim, what's application? That's where we take the truth that we've just grasped about the Lord Jesus and begin to apply it to our lives. And it is because of that that this message is entitled, Considering Christ, How Shall We Live? Looking at Christ's example, looking at His suffering, looking at His humility... How is it that you and I are to live in light of who Jesus is and what He's done for us? That's a worthwhile subject, topic to talk about. Wouldn't you agree? It's really what should drive us each day as to get out of bed and rejoice in the Lord and live for Him. And we re really want to break it down to something fairly simple. I find if we keep things simple that we tend to remember them far more. Isn't that right? So... Four words we're going to talk about this morning. Work, shine, receive, and follow. Pretty simple. Would you agree? Let's talk about what Paul talks about here. First thing, 
Work out your own salvation. Isn't that what Paul says? Work out your own salvation. Look back with me at verse 12. He says, Therefore, my beloved, he calls them his beloved. He loved them deeply. As you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. He says, listen, you followed me and did what I said while I was with you, but I expect even more now that I'm not with you. For you to carry on, for you to be committed to these things. And then what, listen to what he says. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now Paul takes seriously what it means to live a life for Christ. Wouldn't you agree? He gave his life for it. He was committed to it. He suffered for it. He took it seriously. Here's a question for you. Not in a mean spirit, but in a relevant question. Do we? Do we take it seriously? I pray that you do. We need to. Why? Because our Lord is worthy of our being serious Christians. Brother Tim, are you saying that we all need to be stern-faced and never have joy? That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that we need to be committed to the cause of Christ and we need to be focused on the things of the Lord and we don't need to play games about this thing we call the Christian life. Don't you agree? We need to be serious about it. Why? We studied why last week. Having given the Philippians the ultimate example that we're to follow in Christ, he then counsels them and us to, listen to what he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Here's the question that we need to think about. What does that mean? What does it mean to work out your own salvation, Brother Tim? I thought salvation is a gift. Guess what? It is. Salvation is a gift. Brother Tim, I thought we were saved by grace. Not by works, and that from the writing of the Apostle Paul. Isn't that right? That's right. So the truths you just referenced are both from Paul. So what is Paul saying here? What's he talking about? I want you to note, first of all, once again, the word, therefore. Therefore. All that he's about to say to us is tied to what he's just told us. What we covered two weeks ago about the ultimate example of humility. What is he saying? Here it is. Because Jesus so humbled himself, because Christ has suffered so for us, because he was obedient unto death, even the terrible death of the cross, therefore, for this reason, we should take seriously our Christian walk when we consider the price that was paid so that we might belong to Christ. You get that, don't you? We should be humble. We should be willing to suffer. We should be people who are not playing at this thing we call the Christian life, but we should be sincere. People of integrity, striving to live for Jesus, knowing we're going to fall short, but striving always. That's what he's talking about. Listen to me carefully. When he says, work out your own salvation, he's not saying work out as in earn. Earn your salvation. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, live out. He's saying, demonstrate. He's saying, make proof of. Someone has asked a very relevant question. If you were put on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Paul was put on trial for being a Christian, and there was more than enough evidence to convict him. Would there be for you and me? I hope there would be. Otherwise, our testimony witness isn't very effective, is it? When people remember you someday, what will they say about you? Will they remember? Will it be apparent to them that you were a committed Christian? We all write our testimony long before somebody does our funeral service. Isn't that right? Work out. Live out. Make proof of, demonstrate that you actually, in all reality, belong to Christ. And note what he says here, what is to characterize the Christian's attitude toward his salvation. Now let me say something to you in love. This is kind of a toughie, one that many people don't want to deal with or own or embrace. What is he saying? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Brother Tim, I didn't think God wanted us to be afraid. He doesn't. So what is he saying here? 
How do you reconcile those two things? If God doesn't want us to be afraid, then why does He say, do it with fear and trembling? He's saying it for this reason. When He says fear and trembling, He's talking about a holy reverence. To revere God. To respect God. To know that because of who Jesus is and what He did in leaving heaven and setting aside His glory and going through what He went through and dying on the cross for us and shedding His blood because of the price that was paid so that you and I could belong to God, we should cherish belonging to God. And we should always remember what Jesus did for us and what it cost Him. He's talking about also recognizing that what we talk about here, the Christian life, affects the destiny of our eternal soul. It's something not to joke about. But to be very sincere about. Very serious about, if you please. So what's he saying? Make sure. Be certain. Take it seriously. Recognize, child of God, he says, that you have been saved by grace. You didn't earn it. You received the gift of God in Christ. And as you received the gift of God, the gift of eternal life in Christ, Christ bought you and paid for you by his precious blood, so he now owns you, so live for him and not for yourself. Folks, let me say something to you. That's not bondage. And it's not legalism, that's freedom and devotion in Christ. Brother Tim, that sounds kind of fanatical to me. I want to say something to you in love. If that sounds fanatical to you, then you don't love Jesus enough. Because if we love Jesus the way we're supposed to, we'll embrace that and consider it an honor and recognize that He's worthy of that kind of devotion. Amen? He's worthy of it. He gave his all for us. He asked us to live for him as he died for us. That's not bondage. That's not legalism. That's freedom and devotion. That's joy and fulfillment in the Christian life. Living for Jesus. Brother Tim, how is that the case? Paul tells us how we're to do this in verse 13. Look again. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Brother Tim, what are you saying? Make it clear. We don't live the Christian life on our own. God doesn't give us an assignment like a general and say, that's your mission, go fulfill it, let me know, report back when you got it done. We can't be trusted with that. He's got to do it in us. He's got to do it through us. We don't live the Christian life on our own. We live with a dependence upon Christ. Now, we live in a nation that values independence, don't we? Not knocking that. We have the Declaration of Independence. We're a people with tremendous opportunities in this country. We should praise God for them. This is the land of opportunity. And we are a people who we say, pull pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. But let me say something to you, spiritually speaking. When it comes to the spiritual life of the Christian, we were never designed to live independently of God. The fall with Adam and Eve is what brought their independence, but it's also what brought their death. You and I were designed, made, created to live dependent upon the Lord. And this is what Paul's describing here. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He's saying live out. Make proof of it by allowing the Holy Spirit to have His way in you as you become Christ-like. The Holy Spirit's the, the, the one that we're to lean on in order to live for the Lord. And listen to what he says. Note the twofold ministry of the Spirit here. I love this. He works in us to will. Brother Tim, what does that mean? He's the one who gives us the desire to live in purity. And then He works in us to do. He's the one who lives and works in us to fulfill, to live out what we're called to live out. There are times in my life when, let me just be transparent with you, I don't feel like doing something that I've got to do. God says, I want you to go do this. I want you to travel to this country. I want you to make this two-day journey. And I'm like, oh, can I just tell you all something? It is torture for me to sit on a plane. It is. Here's how I pray. Lord, you got to work in me to will, give me the desire, and to do, give me the follow-through. 
I'll do it. But I need you, Holy Spirit, to create that desire in me and a heart of obedience. And I need you to create within me the determination and the strength to go do what you call me to do. Folks, we're to live with a dependence upon the Holy Spirit of the living God. Isn't that right? Work out your own salvation. How do we work it out? By letting the Holy Spirit work in us. It's a reciprocal thing. That's the first thing. What's the second thing he says? Let your light shine. Second thing. Let your light shine. Look at verse 14 with me. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless. Children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Look what he says. Now as the Holy Spirit works in us in the life that is in the life of the believer to form Christ's mind and Christ's character and heart in us. We become conduits, if you please, of His light and His love. So how is that shown? How is that manifested? Look what he says. That we're not complainers. You know, we can fall into a spirit of complaining. Isn't that right? Have you ever seen somebody that just complains about everything? I call them Eeyore Christians. Will it work? Probably not. Oh, we don't have to do that, do we? God forgive us. Now, we all complain sometimes, but listen. You think about what Jesus did and never complained one iota. We ought to be people who don't complain. He says, do what you do without complaining. It's a mark of maturity. It's a mark of commitment. Have a humble and helpful spirit and attitude. Look what else he says, that we're not troublemakers. This is what he's talking about when he says disputing, that is creating division in the body, but rather are peacemakers and unifiers. Note the sequence and where this type of attitude and behavior leads. Listen to what he says, that you may become. Have you grasped that we are on our way to becoming something? We're on our way in the Christian life, being developed by God to become the people that Jesus died that we may become. This is what he says, that you may become blameless. What does that mean? It means without reproach, having a pure life that no one can attack with any kind of validity. And that you may become, his second thing here, harmless. What does that mean? It means without offense. Living a life that does not inflict harm upon others. That's certainly what Jesus' life was, wasn't it? That's the life of Christ displayed. Paul says, recognize that the world in which you live, it's not cynical, it's just being a realist. That it's dark and that it's evil. Society's crooked, he says, and perverse. And in such a situation, you are to shine as lights in the world as the light of Christ's love shines through you. You can't live for yourself and do that. You've got to be living for Jesus. You can't look upon yourself in the sense of independence and do that. You've got to be fixed on the Lord and reflect His glory. That you may become blameless, harmless, he says. And shine as lights in the world. Brother Tim, isn't the fact that we might tell other people, listen, we're shining as lights in the world. Isn't that kind of arrogant? It's only arrogant if we think we can do it on our own. But if we think ourselves righteous in and of ourselves, we have a fundamental problem to begin with. That is not what Paul is describing here. Brother Tim, what is he describing then? He's describing letting Christ's light and love shine through you. And if Christ is the one shining, and if Christ is the one getting the glory, that's not arrogance on our part. That's exalting Christ. That's exalting the Lord. How are we to do that? By holding fast. Look what he says. By holding fast, verse 16, sticking to, being focused on the word of life. What's he talking about? The Bible. He's talking about the Holy Scriptures. Brother Tim, what is he saying here? The Word purifies our life. The Bible convicts us of sin. The Bible refines the life and the attitude of the Christian. The Word of God instructs us in what the mind and the heart of God is, what the will and desire of God is, and how God would have us live. The psalmist said it this way, Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Word of God gives light, and when we put the Word in us, it shines through us. Paul says, let your light shine. The world is a dark place, illumine it by the glowing love and light of Christ. 
What a worthwhile goal. Can I tell you something, folks? A church with that kind of light shining won't have trouble attracting people. It's true. Third thing I want you to see, he covers it here. What is it? Receive God's men. Receive God's men. Go down, if you will, with me to verse 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I may also, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. Go down to verse 25. He mentions another servant. Yet I considered it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my need. Now, folks, I don't think it's coincidence that the very week we get to this part of Philippians is the week after you called a new pastor who's coming to you. What is Paul saying here? Simply put, he says, receive God's man. Receive these men of God. He mentions here two men who are close to him, Timothy and Epaphroditus. Verse 19, I hope to send Timothy to you. Verse 25, I have sent Epaphroditus to you. So, Brother Tim, so? So let's apply this. God sends his man to us. His men to us. God sends his men to the people of God. So how is it we're to respond? We're to receive them. We're to receive them. Well, how do we receive God's man? With open arms. How do we receive God's man? With prayerful attitudes. How do we receive God's man? With receptive minds. How do we receive God's man? With committed and loyal support. Verse 29, go down and look at what he says here about having sent Epaphroditus. Verse 29, receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such men in esteem. Church, receive God's man and hold him in esteem. To esteem a man means to value him greatly. To value him. To treat him respectfully. He says, receive God's men. You know, I think about what the Apostle John tells us of the incarnate word in John 1. He says that the Lord Jesus came into his own, but his own, listen to these sad words, received him not. They rejected him. That is, the Jews of Jesus' day did not even open their arms, much less their hearts or their minds to him. He, Christ Jesus, was the one sent by God, but they refused to receive him. Folks, what a tragedy it is when God, in His graciousness, in His provision, in response to the prayers of people, sends the man of God to the people of God, and yet they won't receive Him. Don't let that be said of you. Receive God's men. It's the fourth thing I want you to see. What is it? Paul covers it here. We're going to summarize some of it. I'm going to give it to you in three words, very simply. Follow their example. Follow their example. Go down to uh, verse 20, if you will. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. He's talking about Timothy there. Go down with me in uh, uh, talking about Epaphroditus to verse 26 where we stop reading. Since he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. For indeed he was sick almost to death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I sent him the more eagerly, that when you see him again you may rejoice, and I may be less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such men in esteem, because for the work of Christ he came close to death, not regarding his life, to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. Now here are two men that are examples of godly men who serve God. Timothy and Epaphroditus. And he says simply, receive these men and learn from them. Follow their example. Follow their example. We've been talking about God's men. Listen to what he says here about Timothy. And then what he says about Epaphroditus. I have no one like-minded, he says of Timothy. What does it mean? Timothy had a heart for the Lord and a heart for the people of God. Timothy was a caring pastor. Timothy was a guy who could be counted on. Timothy was not about himself, verse 21. Timothy was about the work of Christ. Timothy was a man with a proven character, verse 22. He had served in the work of the gospel. What does he say about Epaphroditus? Listen to what he says. He was a brother, fellow worker, fellow soldier. He was a guy you could count on. He ministered to my need, Paul says. 
Epaphroditus served and took care of the needs of others. Epaphroditus was so concerned about others that he had become sick himself at some point. And this is why Paul had sent him back to the Philippians. This is why Paul says, we read it, Receive them therefore in the Lord with all gladness, holding such men in esteem. And then he tells us one more thing in verse 30. Don't miss it. Because for the work of Christ, he came, came close to death, not regarding his own life, to do what? To supply what was lacking in your service to me. Now, we're not told all the details and all the circumstances about this incident. But here's what we know and what we can draw from what Paul says here. Epaphroditus was a man more concerned about others than himself. He counted the gospel more important than his own life. Here was a man. Here was an example. Here was a brother who was committed to caring for others even at his own expense. And here are two men, Timothy and Epaphroditus, worth emulating and imitating. Wouldn't you agree? Follow their example. It's not just the preachers, folks, who need to feel that way. It's every one of us. Brother Tim, why? Because it's that kind of service and attitude and commitment that make a great church that God can use. So that Christ may be magnified and people's lives might be changed. Paul says, follow their example. Brother Tim, what are you saying? When God sends you a man who has a mind like Paul, follow him. When the Lord supplies you a pastor who is a caring pastor and concerned for you, receive him. When Christ brings into your midst one who loves the word and who exalts Christ and not himself, rejoice in him. When you have a pastor who is willing to suffer need in order to care for the needs of the congregation, esteem him greatly. When you have a leader more concerned about the gospel than his own life, pray for him, support him, follow him. Follow him. Follow his example. Let me wrap this up. Work, shine, receive, follow. It's not complicated, is it? It's not complicated. Work out, that is live out. Make proof of your own salvation in reverence and serious commitment. Know that the world is a dark place and it needs light. Shine as lights in the darkness as you allow God to work in you and shine through you. Receive the men of God. Follow them faithfully. You see, folks, being an effective Christian in the world is not easy. But once again, let me say it, it's not complicated. It's pretty simple. Brother Jim, what are you saying? Let's commit or recommit ourselves to that task today, the task of living for Christ and following Him. People need the love of the Lord. People need to hear the gospel. People need a light shining in their darkness. Christ has us here to do just that. And He supplies what we need that we might be used of God as instruments in His hand. Let's pray together. Father, we exalt You here. How worthy of praise is Christ who gave up the glories and splendors and safety of heaven and came and died a criminal's death in our place. Father, may we live for Him, not for ourselves. I pray for this church in the days ahead. I pray for Pastor Sean and his precious family. I pray in the time that you've given me to remain with these folks before His coming that you'll speak to us and we'll be ready when He comes to follow your man. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mike. Green Acres, you have been challenged by the Word. And we've come now to the time of our invitation. Won't you come? As the altar is open, Pastor Tim will be down to receive you if you'll, if you'll come, Pastor Brian. Why don't we stand together and sing, trust and obey as we worship together. When we walk with us in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud.
cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear can abide while we trust. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Pastor Brian. mentioned this in the previous service, but wanted to mention again just our appreciation for, for Brother Tim and the heart that he has, uh, the heart that he has for ministry, um, just the way that he diligently does everything that he does with the association. He really is a pastor to pastors, and he's just been a blessing uh, to us in leadership, and we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord, uh, to the calling that he's given you, uh, your love for the gospel, uh, for preaching and for teaching, and to do it with a heart of sincerity, and most of all, uh, your love for us during this time. And uh, there, there's so much more that we could say, but we praise God for you being a shining light uh, for us here at Green Acres. Thank all of you. And so, um, I, you know, it's interesting. I never thought I would ever use this word, but I, I've heard it used often. It's that word bittersweet. You know, as we look forward to, um, to having a new pastor, it's that bittersweet moment of, of just being so thankful for who's been with us in an interim time and then at the same time just looking forward to Sean and his family being a part um, of this fellowship. So um, as, we, as we look to depart here in just a few moments, uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention for our youth um, and for our families, especially those who have had graduates uh, this season. We know that this has been a disruption. There's been so much that has um, gotten in the way of some of the celebration and some of that, but I I'm very glad that you guys were able to have some graduations and um, actually get to walk across the stage and that sort of thing. And so uh, we are going to um, have a very, very special service that we typically do, and it's just a recognition. It's not to take the entire service, but we would like to recognize our graduates who have graduated from high school, um, and you'll see in your bulletin that will take place on August 2nd. Um, and so there's some information. If you are a graduate, if you're watching online and, and you're not here today, um, please know that we're looking for information about what school um, your graduate has graduated from and um, any honors that they have received as a result of the last few years. Also, um, interested in knowing their, their plans, their plans after graduation. If they're going to go straight to college, some go straight into work. Um, either, either option um, certainly is, is part of people's lives as they do that. So we're just interested in learning more about um, what they plan to do post-graduation. Um, if they are pursuing a career interest, we'd like to know that. And one other thing that we're asking parents to do, and this is based on feedback that we have received over the years, and that is to have some input from parents, not only about career plans, but also one piece of advice that you would like to give to your graduate as they're here receiving their recognition uh, that Sunday. So please send that information in to Miss Abby in the office. And there's some other information about Sunday school. Um, if you, uh, with all that is happening, by the way, I know Pastor Mike had mentioned this and Brother Tim alluded to it as well. Um, it is not part of who we are to, to try to suggest not being together. So this is a very, very uh, hard decision for us to say that we're going to have to backtrack on the plan for Sunday night and Wednesday night just for a time. And we'll... Um, we'll keep you updated as to um, the plans as we resume those services. But for, for, for now, and that does include, of course, um, things related to the youth in Awana. And so we'll continue to meet through Zoom 
uh, with our youth, and we're doing something right now called Power Hour on the Move. Um, it's uh, the challenge series, so right now we're doing Chick-fil-A and Popeye's Chicken, and then uh, what sandwich they like best, that sort of thing. There's some other things that are going to be coming coming up soon. So we're still keeping contact and and um, just trying to keep keep engaged um, with families. And so um, as we go today, yes, Brother Tim. Can I just take yes, seconds here to speak? absolutely. Micah mentioned 4,400 new cases in 24 hours in Georgia. Um, this kind of was driven home to me. Uh, Austin's here with me this morning. He's been serving at the VA hospital. They had a coworker test positive. Austin had to quarantine himself until he got a test. He's all clear, and we're thankful for that. But I had a wedding to do yesterday. Bride and groom tested positive for COVID on Friday. Uh, had a pastor call me Friday night. They had someone usher for them in their church last Sunday. Uh, became symptomatic first of the week, tested positive before the week was out. That church couldn't even have church today. So I would just want you to know that we're trying to do all we can do to keep you safe and be as careful as we can. And we felt like having one exposure a week for all of us versus three might be a good thing. So uh, we appreciate your support in that. But uh, our pastors are unified and we're just looking out for you. Right. We were looking forward to being back together. So thank you. And now um, comes our time for benediction, so let's join our hearts in prayer. We hope that you have an amazing day. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for just this very, very special time. Uh, Lord, just as Brother Tim was just talking about, I think some of what we do in the house of the Lord, sometimes we just take it for granted. And so, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you have blessed us to be able to, to really to to praise you, to worship you, um, and we can do that any part of the day. But part of our praising is, is being around our family, this extended family that you've given us right here on this corner. Thank you for um, just, just people um, that, are, that love you and desire to, to see your kingdom grow. And so, Lord, we seek you this day. We seek you this morning. As we, as we go out from this place, asking you to, to guide our, our steps this morning. Lord, be our mouthpieces as, as maybe we're, we're out. Maybe some of us are out at lunch today. Um, Lord, I, I just pray that you would um, also just, uh, as it's been said earlier, but I, I pray for um, our, our pastor as he is going to be uh, joining us very, very soon. But there's a lot of plans and preparation involved in, in all that they're trying to do. Um, to make sure uh, that they're able to be with us soon. And so we just pray for the closing of houses and contracts being accepted and uh, some of the other steps that are necessary in, in um, finding a, a new doctor and some other different things. And so, Lord, we just, we just pray um, for all those pieces to come together. Uh, Lord, um, send us out uh, this day. Send us out in your love and send us out um, with the, the words of the gospel on our lips. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.